Um, thank you for joining us all week. Amber is a former Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year and also a National Excellence in Teaching Agriculture Award winner. And she teaches third grade at Morrison. And then Teresa teaches um, pre-K at Morrison. And they both have presented at our state summer conference um, in the past several years. And everyone always enjoys their sessions. All right, when we got uh, ready to fill in our application to do our um, for conference sharing, we decided we wanted to use our Dr. Seuss books. So that's why we can act with our eyes shut. So when I first started, my daughter's favorite, favorite thing is the grant. She loves the movie. She loves the book. And so even though it, we were doing this during Dr. Seuss uh, week in March, I still pulled out this uh, story. And so I have uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And these are some ideas that I did in my pre-K class, um, like I said, in March. Um, we were talking about earlier that we think this was probably one of the last things we did right before um, everything shut down because it was right before spring break. So um, one of the, th um, the resources that Ag in the Classroom has is this Ag on Route 66 um, mag magazine, and it's got all kinds of uh, different things in it, but I was just pulling up the Christmas tree. This, this is, um, you can get this hard copy, or it's also available on the website digitally. So um, there's a page for Christmas trees on here, and I think there it is. And so I just pull this up and share it with my students um, so they can actually see a picture. Um, and you can see the corns on there too. It shows, uh, talks a little bit about the Christmas trees, and then it shows um, where the Christmas trees are raised in Oklahoma along Route 66. So that's a good resource to use and you can use it for all the different things that you talk about um, for Ag in, Ag in the Classroom. Um, another resource that I used for, whoops, sorry, um, is the Fruits, Nuts, and Veggies Oh My. And this was the game that we played. Um, and so we went outside and played this game and it was, uh, the directions are right there. It's as um, ask them what shape a tree is. Of course, I teach pre-K, so shapes are important. So the, we did the triangle, and so the game is that you pretend to be a Christmas tree, and then uh, if you get tagged, you have to stop and freeze like a Christmas tree in a triangle, and then for you to get unfroze, the presents have to go underneath your legs. And so um, it shows you collect, select four taggers, and when the teacher yells Christmas tree tag, they run around and do it. And even my pre-K, they had a really good time um, playing this game. Um, and it was good to get outside and do that. Now, I don't know about in December if it would be warm enough to go outside and do it. And I'm not sure about with social distancing and everything, but it was fun. Um, we also did the pine cone bird feeders, and um, I had I have a pine tree in my yard, but um, I didn't have enough, and so I just asked for parents to donate, and I have a bunch now. But I had um, the peanut butter; they spread it on there and roll it in bird seed, and you can see them there um, making those in the classroom. And then I also put them in a bag. Um, Um, put it put it in a bag so it doesn't make a mess when they're sitting at home. All right, our next book is Green Eggs and Ham. So someone's asking, is there an alternative if a net allergy? Hey, we can see you guys. So um, do you guys have a suggestion? If not, um, I've used the soy um, soy butter. It's like yeah. peanut butter, but it's um, Thank you. I can't think what it's called right now. I'll think of it and I'll answer that one in the Q and A. Okay. Oh, somebody put sunflower. So. Yep, that's a good one too. Are you back to the slides now? Yes, ma'am. All right. So our next book is Green Eggs and Ham. And 
And there's lots of things you can do with eggs or ham, or you can bring it in for all different kinds of things. Um, but I pulled up a lesson, um, and this is these are what you find on the website if you're not familiar. And it has all your standards out here to the side um, from pre-K on up to fourth. And you just you don't have to do the entire lesson. You just pull out what you want to use um, out of the lesson. And so I use part of this lesson in my class. Um, here I talked, I did this reading page, but I did, of course my kids can't read, just to tell them some things about eggs. And then I think there's a, I, we did, we colored this uh, picture of the chicken. Um, However, they we always let them do whatever you know they want. And then I read this little poem by Jack Perletsky called "Last Night I Last Night I Dreamed of Chickens." And so um, you can just pick and choose what you what works for your class, your level for each of the lessons. So um, in third grade, I have I use again the Green Eggs and Ham as my mentor text. And then I had the QR code um, so that they could QR code and um, read it um, throughout the week. Um, um, I took mine a little different, and you'll see on a slide or two. Um, we actually had um, people in our community that did um, had different varieties of chickens, and so we brought in different types of eggs and kind of compared and contrasted the eggs. Um, we, um, so on some of my video, and when we share back the screen, I'll show you with what we did with um, the eggs when we brought them in. So I, um, I know what the incubator on here I got from the Chickadoodle workshop from the ladies, or for, from the soybean board, and I've hatched chicks in my class, um, was planning on doing it this year for the last two years though. Um, since I got the incubator. I have some friends that raise chickens and so I get the eggs from them. But if you don't have an incubator, um, I think there's a program through the extension office where you can get incubators and eggs and everything to hatch out. And I always just give the chickens back to the people that I got the eggs from so I don't have to worry about the kids wanting to take them home or anything like that. And so um, Amber's got some things on here too. Yes, we also made omelets and muffin tins and um, brought a different varieties of ham, cheese, some veggies and made omelets and muffin tins. And I think you could make the um, green scrambled eggs, but we just took ours a little bit different because I, it seemed that third graders had already kind of done the green eggs. So we just made omelets and you can do that in a Ziploc and then we just poured it in muffin tins. Yeah, because I usually use this with green at the beginning of the year, and so we would make the green scrambled eggs. So that's another idea. Another um, an experiment that I got when I went to uh, the Chickadoodle workshop um, was the naked egg experiment. And I know that the group the other day did the same um, experiment, but you just put an egg in a cup of vinegar and you let it set out. You, this is the one I had in my class, and um, it, it eats the shell off, and the kids just love that. So you can take that as far as you want as far as um, science experiments and things for the upper grades. So, and this was, uh, I got it from the extension office because um, they did that. I saw some 4-H kids posting about that this summer doing this experiment. Um, and then with the eggs, we took it into egg diversity with Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream was that everyone would be treated equally no matter what the color of their skin. So we had, again, with our egg collections and of course being different sizes and shapes and colors, um, and then we compared the eggs to people and how the eggs were alike. And so that was the worksheet, and that is one of uh, my students filled in. And they were it was just something that they were able to do and um, hands-on and hopefully make that connection that they were all the same on the inside, no matter the outside. And when um, I think I've sent this to Audrey, and so when you um, get our packet at the end of um, – 
the conference, this um, worksheet will be in um, my um, packet for you to have. Um, I just got it off of um, Teacher Pay Teacher, but um, it was a good one, and my kids really liked it. So um, that is one we completed this year. Another one is um, just using plastic eggs, and this was one that was just real cheap, real easy, and putting baking soda and vinegar in a plastic egg, and of course, um, putting that on there and watching it fizz, um, that kind of thing. So that chemical reaction for our science um, is what we used that day. This was an activity that I found, um, a STEM activity that you could use um, for sink and float, and it, you see the, the different objects and they get to pick what they want to put in their egg. And then um, if, if they're able to write, you can extend that out and put make the predictions. Uh, in my class, I would probably do it all whole group, maybe on, on a whiteboard or something, um, because I don't think the pre-K would be able to do this, but obviously the uh, upper grades would be able to do this. Go back one. Okay. Um, before we go to our next book, another activity I did with um, the green eggs and ham was, um, and again, yeah. no, that's okay. Um, again, it's a, it'll be in the packet, but it was um, that I would not, and that I would, or I would eat, and then green eggs and ham. But then it had some uh, prepositional phrases kind of thing, so we used that in um, third grade, and again, that'll be in your packet with, at the end. The next book, Mr. Brown Can Move, this was probably my son's favorite book when he was growing up, and I would read it to him all the time, and so this is, it was like revisiting my kid's childhood, because my kids are grown now, so um, this was kind of fun, but one of the things that I've done in my class is uh, the street cows lesson, and uh, we're going to show a video of the cows on parade, um, if you're not familiar with the street cows. Maybe. Yeah. Next week. Yeah. Thank you. 
We, we also, after that, we, we also talk about the different ones that that was one of the original ones that came about, the Cows on Parade, but also we've talked about how different communities also have done the same thing, but um, like Tulsa with the penguins and Oklahoma City with the buffalo. And so um, we do the activity where they, call, they get to color their own street cow and then we hang them up in the room for everybody to look at. Um, another activity that I have done with uh, the cows is the beef or dairy lesson. And I'm going to pull that up real quick. And it, you can see that it doesn't have pre-K on there, but I've just adapted it down to use it. And we made the, there's books in here that compare dairy cows or do, they don't compare. They just tell the characteristics of the dairy cows and beef cows and um, let the kids make those books. So... This was another activity that I did in the classroom. Um, it was comparing cows and people, and you can, and it was a Venn diagram. And so um, we did this, like I said, with, in my pre-K class. And they, some of it, they got a little crazy, you know, as they always do. But um, it was good to see here they, that they could tell the difference and um, differences and similarities. So. But there's all kinds of lessons that we've included in this. And like though so you'll get to get this at the end of the session, uh, not the session, but the end of the conference. Okay, I'm always looking for figurative language in third grade. So um, Mr. Brown Camus is awesome for onomatopoeia. So we um, use that a lot. And then we were able to illustrate an onomatopoeia from the book. Another, um, I really like cooking in third grade and making different things. So we always make butter and then ice cream in a bag. And so we did that, you know, using, I think on the screen before was where you could go to the story of milk and cheese on the website and that kind of thing. So I put the ice cream in a bag recipe on there. I'm not sure I did the butter, but um, it, it's on the website as well. And I just want to make sure that um, we did this together. So Teresa and I worked together a lot. So uh, my third graders go down once a week to her pre-k room and we read with them and so at the end of the week on we go on Thursdays actually so we would go down there and we read our uh, Dr. Seuss books with them and I think we made butter with them um, before we've made oh, butter yes. together we've um, we've done a lot of cooperative with a um, with her pre-k so it's been a lot of fun. So again, I have a QR code for this book so my students would practice it so for fluency so that they were able to um, read that on Thursday when we went down to, um, down to the pre-K room. We picked 10 apples up on top. Um, just because it's, it's a fun one and the counting and the numbers, um, that kind of thing. Um, we used, um, you can, the going back to the website, you can use an apple a day and how to pick the best. I had my students bring in um, a variety of apples and we did the traditional taste test, which is, it, which was, it still is a lot of fun. They might have done that earlier, but that's still a lot of fun to do. So we make sure that we um, eat um, the apples with them. And um, you can, of course, we've done the pictures and the apples, um, uh, moving the apples around there. We had a seesaw lesson on that we could do that on um, our seesaw um, application that we do with our kids. Um, you can make applesauce. There's all kinds of things you can do with apples. Okay, and then um, we, the STEM project we did, um, we we did potato towers and the reason we did that is because they're cheaper than apples and I couldn't really stand throwing apples away so I just bought um, like two five pound bags of um, potatoes 
I cubed them for them ahead of time and then they had toothpicks and so they were able to um, we put them in groups and just tried to see how tall that they could make the tower um, and that was um, a lot of fun I think go one more slide I think I've got a few more pictures of just the different ones that um, we made and it was just a lot of fun but again the potato towers um, and then um, we're going to stop sharing just for a second and I'll show you a game. The four corners game that I like to play was really um, a good one with ten apples on top. So you're doing your sentences, declarative, exclamatory, interrogative. Sure. And I think it's a great idea um, to suggest using the potatoes because it is hard to throw away those apples. If you're using the apples, you could always do taste test with them. And uh, Port Council grants are good to apply for to be able to do all these activities that they're talking about. Um, but the potatoes is also a good alternative. That way you don't have to worry about if you throw out the um, potatoes, you don't feel as bad as throwing away the apples. All right, we can see y'all. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So with my 10 up, I mean, with the uh, four corners game, I will get like four uh, papers and I have them somewhere in the classroom, but anyway, and then put them in the four, uh, I don't put them in corners, but my four walls of my classroom and in the book, I would read, um, I would read it and then say, like, for example, this one says, look, see, I can do three. And then I would say, well, what type of sentence does that, uh, is that an example of, and then they would go to that corner or that wall that had exclamatory. So just a good way to get them up and around and movement. And again, in third grade, very important for me is to review those types of, of sentences and, and then incorporating um, our book that we, we chose to use. And ladies, you're not seeing it, I don't think, but it says, someone just said that they appreciate all the different grade levels that you guys are sharing so that you, they're getting ideas for multiple grade levels. So people are yeah, appreciating Yeah, I, I hope so. Um, we try to incorporate, but again, um, since I'm third and she's pre-K, we do try to um, utilize. So if you've got a partner, um, and we've done this quite a while, sometimes if you're the only one at your school, it's kind of, you feel like you're alone, but partner up with somebody and then you can kind of bounce ideas off. And we, we actually get to do a little bit more um, because we work together. So that's an idea if, if, you know, you feel like you're the only one in your school, buddy up with someone that's lower or you know, higher than you, and um, that way you're not trying to feel like you're doing all of it, but you can do a little piece and then add a little piece, and that's what we've done over the years. We, we've added and added together. Yeah, and it's nice for us, but the kids just love it, so um, doing the buddy thing. Are you back to our slides now? Your slides and you. We've got everything this time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's 30, but hey, all right, good. All right. This one was one that I really wanted to do because again, in third grade, um, it just kind of resonated with me again with coins. And I was thinking, um, this is about March. So reviewing again, getting ready for that state test. Um, so um, we chose, there's a walk it in my pocket. And this was um, a really fun one um, using your food, your using your food dollar and cents as the ag lesson from the ground all around and fresh from the farm. Again, thinking about money and cost. That's kind of where I went with this a little bit. Um, and also um, it was good with um, rhyming. Um, was um, We could interact with rhyming and I have, we played a I have who has with that. So um, I really enjoyed this one and I've got some things to show you in just a second. Again, there's the review, and um, I made pocket folder or pocket game for centers, and um, hopefully you can see them. They look like that. Can you see that, I hope? Maybe? Anyway, um, I made pocket folders, and I gave you my template for the pocket, so I made games for the centers. I included um, the math folder games. I got grocery store advertisements for fruit and vegetable prices. Um, and reviewed addition um, and multiplication, that kind of thing. Um, also, there was a poem, a worm in my pocket for fluency and poetry review. The 
the uh, worm poem um, is in, um, will be in my packet at the end. Um, so you can have that. And there was also, oh, anyway, there was a review and I have that in our packet as well. So um, that was one that I like to use. Okay, so maybe stop sharing. Okay, that's all right. Okay, so hopefully um, we have a few more ideas. Um, we are a four-day school week, um, so there's other books that you could choose if you have that fifth day. We have some ideas. Um, another one is the Osei, oh Can You See? You can do a lot of those in science. I used it, and um, I did a video um, earlier in, um, I think in May, where we actually planted um, some cilantro, basil, and so we did some things with seeds. So that's another one that you could add um, with it if you wanted to. Um, but there are several other Dr. Seuss books that you could use um, for that week if you wanted to. And I think Teresa found some cute things that she's going to show you. And on Tuesday, um, in one of the sessions, one of the presenters was talking about Matthew and the Ublek, and there was the lesson that goes along with that to make the oobleck and so that's another way we're just wanting to show you that you don't have to do ag in the classroom separate from everything else that you need to have a specific time for ag in the classroom that you can tie it into things that you're already doing in your class um this was something i was showing amber that i found at target and the spot my favorite place um and it's got the different characters it's the fish sally Thing one, Conrad, all the things from Cat in the Hat, the characters, and then the middle um, dice has um, different motor skills, toe touches, run in place, frog jumps, spin in a circle, and then the bottom one has numbers, so you could roll that anytime you're needing a little filler um, for an activity or if the kids are really restless. I thought it was really cute. Like I said, it was from Target at the spot. So, And then I found my little um, cards. So I would just write, I just have them a little laminated and then write on there. It could be, I, I think I, my demonstration earlier was um, types of sentences, but it could be anything that you wanted to review. And I just hang these in four different areas of the room and then they go to that um, spot. Um, I do QR codes um, with, with the books that I um, use. Um, when I did some virtually, I read it to them. You could record yourself reading to them. There's all kinds of YouTubes that have already, um, you know, got the books read. So you could send that out if you're having to do that virtually. Um, when we were doing, we were lucky that we did this right before we left. So we were able to do the hands-on. However, um, when I did some things um, with Cinco de Mayo, I put my recipe from Ag in the Classroom with the tortillas in a bag, and I had some students that went ahead and made that. So go ahead, you never know what they're gonna share, you know, what they're gonna do or their parents, but you can always share all of that virtually as well. Another one, if you have, um, you know, if you're five day or if you wanna do a different book or you have something else, um, Wacky Wednesday was another one that I thought, you know, try something new, try a vegetable, that you hadn't tried before or you know try one that's kind of um you know may, you know some students might not know or might not try normally but wacky wednesday i thought that was another one that um could easily tie in um i'm not sure if you got to see um or how well i showed you but this was the ah, this was like the pocket folder game so i just made that walk it in your pocket so all my fold all my little games for that week for centers, I just put little pockets on the front and just put them in little envelopes. But you could tie it to Agna Classroom, could tie it to your academic standard, um, whatever. So I just use that. That template will be in your um, things that um, Audrey's going to send out at, at the end of the conference. Um, and then um, another one I found, I don't know if it's going to be kind of hard, but um, I found this at Walmart just the other day, and it's indoor gardening made easy, and it's just the kit, and it has the plant food, the seeds, the growing medium. Um, it has, it's just a herb growing kit, so, um, and it's hydro wick, um, 
So I thought that was going to be pretty neat. And it's the basil, cilantro, and mint. So I'm looking forward to uh, maybe using this in my classroom um, this year um, and seeing how that works. Another one I did, or and I'm sure a lot of you do this one, but this was always fun for me when we're doing green eggs and ham. I always put, um, get the little plastic eggs around Easter time or springtime and, and keep them, but put your little activities um, in there. Um, and, and it's always a lot of fun. But again, you're just, just little things that kind of keep agriculture in your vocabulary and to talk about it and those kind of things. So those are some ideas we had for Dr. Seuss. We are open to questions, um, go back over some things, um, whatever you need us to, um, to do. I just want to let everyone know some of the lessons that they mentioned today, um, we're working on updating. So oh. <laughs> two lessons that are um, updated on the website, if you haven't checked in a while, that are early childhood is counting sheep. That's a new one that was about the census, but there's also um, activities with sheep in there. Um, that one's been updated and then pop pop popcorn so both of those are much more early childhood friendly um, than they were in the past and then two that will be added soon they're getting ready to be uploaded are the apple a day and the come into my parlor can i share a couple more books absolutely okay um these aren't really um, dr seuss books but they're ones that i've um i use during virtual um learning or that I found new or that kind of thing. So um, my daughter got to go on the trip that you guys went on, um, the one day conference, and it reminded me of, she took a picture with the alpaca. So um, I have Maca the alpaca. So um, that's a good one I, I'm going to be using. Um, I did this one for Cinco de Mayo. I think I put it on the Ag in the Classroom. I think you guys put that, but Dragons Love Tacos. And that was a really fun one because a lot of people did gardening this year and doing things with their garden. So what a great way of where your food comes from and talking about your fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, with that one was the Big Moon Tortilla. And I did uh, have uh, students make that. Um, and that recipe is on the um, Island Classroom website. I just found my little tip for that is it says use um, Crisco, but I heated mine just a little bit because it was easier for the kids to mix in the bag when it was just a little bit um, or room temperature, or just a little bit heated so that they can mix it in the bag. So those were two that um, I used during virtual. Um, the fry bread um, would be a really good one for, um, I would say pre-K, K-1. It is so visualizing um, when you're reading, and it's very like um, it says fry bread is shape. Hands mold the dough flat like a pancake, round like a ball, or puffy like Nana's softest pillow. So, very, um, very visual using your visual visualization. Um, that and it's, it's sound, it talks about colors, art. So this one is probably going to be one of my new favorites, fry bread. And I thought, you know, I did it virtually, but if we were in the cl in the classroom, I could have had, you know, um, bring in fry bread. We could have made fry bread or um, that kind of thing. And then um, one, another one that I got um, this summer um, that I'll use with green eggs and ham is the good egg. So I thought that one was kind of fun. It's like the, it's from the creator of the bad seed. So it's the good egg. So I thought I would probably add that one into um, later on and that kind of thing. So those are just a few more that I've kind of came across. And if you, ha we did virtual, I guess the last, we did six, six weeks. weeks. We did six weeks of virtual. So some of the, some of the, not the Dr. Seuss, we were lucky enough that we were still in school um, before that. But then I did some of these virtually. And um, so if you have, you know, I do have some of um, information. If you want some of that virtually, and if you don't, then that's fine too. But um, we did some virtually. Um, was there any? What's the name of the alpaca book? I think it's Maca the Alpaca. M A C C A the Alpaca. 
Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And um, what it, its focus is smarts and kindness over bullying. And so I thought I would use it at the beginning of school this year since my theme for the past three years is llamas and all my students keep giving me llamas. So I guess <laughs> it's going to stay llamas. Um, but it's um, she's small and kind and then she meets the big um, unkind llama. So okay, it's an app asking the llama. Yeah, asking, so can you show the cover of that one? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's a it's scholastic. I think I got it at the book fair. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got some librarians on saying great, I, uh, great ideas. They like the tie in with so many great books that's going to help them in the library as well. So that's exciting. Oh, too. yes, please ask us because you know, we have lots of agriculture books. <laughs> I didn't even give my favorites. Tell them your favorite. Um, who grew my soup? Oh yeah, I like that one too. Who grew my soup is probably my most favorite ever. Um, we still do um, the. Uh, oh, one of my favorite stories got dropped out of the reading basil we had, and so the story that we tied in now. We are a journey school, so we do tops and bottoms. And that's fun, fun, fun. But that's a book too. But um, we tie in Who Grew My Soup and my students um, every year. We bring our cans of vegetables and kind of do that. And we do stone soup and anything we have left over, then we send to our um, blessing. I either put it in our blessing box or we have a um, church um, take care of that. So um, those are that's one of my favorites. What are your favorite? I, I like I like uh, pancakes, pancakes by Eric Carl to do when we're doing pancakes because it talks about all the different steps because kids don't realize all the different things that go into the harvesting and everything else. So mm -hmm. that's a really fun one. Yeah, that is fun. So um, we we incorporate and I guess I I guess the new buzzword nowadays is mentor text. So I use a lot of agriculture books as my mentor text or small group for the week. Um, or try to tie it in that way. So yes, we love books. All right, fantastic. Um, those ideas are coming in as well, the tops and bottoms. Um, the Who Grew My Soup sometimes is difficult to find, but if you go on to the um, American Farm Bureau Foundation, you mm -hmm. can order it there most of the time. They still have it. Um, so we will, I'll make a note and we'll share that link to um, so that you guys can find that book because that is a great book. Anybody, we've got about two minutes left. Anyone have a final question or thought? Someone said My Wolf's Pancakes. So that might be a book you guys want to um, check out. They're suggesting that one to you. I shared that one with my class this uh, last year too. They're right this very minute, the new book from Farm Bureau. Mm -hmm. 